Hey everyone, Adam Shaw here from Brevera Media Company. Today we're going to be talking about the history of Guinness beer. We're doing this video in connection with our new YouTube video series on Irish history and culture in tribute to upcoming St. Patrick's Day. So far we've done a video on the history of St. Patrick. We've done videos on the history of the leprechaun. We've even done a video on the history of beer. So if you like that sort of thing, definitely check out the rest of those videos. Uh, without further ado, let's get to it. The, the, let's look at the history of Guinness beer. Uh, Guinness was originated by Arthur Guinness, who was an Irish brewer. Uh, at age 27, Arthur Guinness used a 100-pound inheritance he received from his archbishop godfather, Arthur Price, and used it to invest in a brewery in Leakslip, Ireland, about 17 kilometers from Dublin. Uh, four years later, Arthur Guinness moved to Dublin and signed a 9,000-year lease on a four-acre brewery at St. James Gate. So 9,000-year lease, man, you really want to hold down the territory. Uh, that's, that's unbelievable that those even existed uh, back, back uh, you know, in the 1700s. Uh, then on May, let's see, ni May 19th, 1769, Guinness exported his first ale, which was a shipment of six and a half barrels to Great Britain. Uh, as you might know, Guinness traditionally is considered a dark stout beer. Uh, the first Guinnesses to roll out uh, were used the term single stout, double stout, porter, extra stout, foreign stout. Uh, very much terms that are used uh, in, in today, really. Uh, throughout the latter 1800s, Guinness became one of the top three British and Irish brewers. Uh, Guinness sales soared uh, from 350,000 barrels uh, in 1868 to seven, 779,000 barrels in 1876. Uh, so in a 10-year frame, give or take, uh, they doubled. They doubled production. Uh, by 1886, Guinness became a public company. It was averaging 1,138,000 barrels a year. So, and then another 10 years later, so we went from 779,000 barrels in 1876, and then about another 10 years later, uh, it looks like they they went up another like 500,000. Uh, the company at the time was valued at about six million pounds, uh, and then by 1914, Guinness was producing two million six hundred fifty-two uh, thousand barrels of beer a year, which was more than double its nearest competitor. Uh, by the 1930s, Guinness became the seventh largest company in the world. The seventh largest company in the world. That's, that's wild. Guinness Stout. Uh, if we look at the ingredients today, it is made from water, barley, roast malt, extract, uh, hops, and brewer's yeast. A portion of the barley is roasted to give Guinness its dark color and characteristic taste, which features really a nice burnt flavor. Uh, also, the beer has a thick, creamy head, which comes from mixing the beer with nitrogen and carbon dioxide when poured. Uh, some modern-day drinks made made from Guinness include the Irish Car Bomb, a pint of Guinness with a shot of Bailey's dropped into the glass and then drank. Uh, a, then we also have the Guinness Black and Tan. You have half a pint of pale ale on the bottom with Guinness poured on top slowly. Uh, you could kind of pour it over the top of a spoon, and then you get a dual layer of pale ale and then dark ale on top. Um, and then we've got chocolate cake, which I actually have – created myself you do a pint of guinness with a shot of vanilla vodka and man it it just tastes delicious um so i just wanted to throw out uh, a few uh, historical facts about guinness i'm actually enjoying a guinness right now uh so you know happy saint patrick's day everyone have a nice safe holiday and uh take care all right bye now